Hello, New Life. I am, strangely enough, outside of Panera in northern Florida, recording a sermon, or something like a sermon, in three parts. This is part one. Uh, why am I here? I'll have to explain that. Uh, but rest assured, I have not fled uh, Montgomery County. Uh, this is not every man for himself, or as the Old Testament says, every man to his own tent. Uh, it is not that. Hopefully next week we will have live streaming of, of a service um, for you to watch. But for this week, I'm recording this message, and if I stayed here in Florida, I could uh, get this done today. Well, what a strange moment we're in, right? It's a pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic. pandemic, And I want to talk uh, today with you about this coronavirus moment. I wonder how you're responding, how you're feeling. Are you uh, worried? That would be understandable. Maybe you're on the opposite end of the spectrum that uh, you're not worried at all and you're wondering why others are worried. The, the mortality rates are low. As far as I know, no one in Montgomery County has yet died from this. Uh, so what's the big deal? I, I wonder where you're at. I can tell you my reaction this week. Uh, there was a moment where Rudy Gobert, who plays for the Utah Jazz, was diagnosed positively. And in the sports world, that changed everything, starting with the NBA, leading to other sports, and now there's basically no sports. But with Gobert, he did something that my brother and I, as we talked on the phone afterwards, we both said, oh, I could have done that could have done something foolish that he did. Well, what did he do that was so foolish? He had it. He had the virus. He didn't know. And uh, he was kind of playful about it, touching things he shouldn't have, these microphones at, a, at a, a, a media event. He was touching them, acting like he was infecting them or they were infecting him. Who cares? And it sounds like in the locker room, he was doing some things carelessly too, and he spread it to his teammate, Donovan Mitchell. And what we hear is that the Utah Jazz is frustrated with him. There's going to be some reconciliation needed. He has apologized, but it sounds like more work relationally needs to be done. And my brother and I said, I could have done that too, you know, kind of playfully touching microphones uh, and other things because you don't think you have it. There's a lesson there for us. For us uh, to be careful. This is a love thy neighbor moment. I'll get back to that in the next segment. But for right now, let's just think about how our faith is built uh, around things that you can't feel right now but are nonetheless true and will become very true, visible. You will feel them as realities in the future, as Rudy Gobert found out. In other words, we can be asymptomatic today. No symptoms. But things are very real, very true, and we will see them and feel them in the future. I was thinking about Proverbs in this regard. Proverbs warns us uh, about uh, all talk leads to poverty. If you do no work, you just talk. Or laziness, a, a little folding of the hands can lead to poverty. Even though you have food in the cupboard right now. Right? But if you're not working, it can lead to poverty. The symptoms you don't feel yet, but they're coming. Pride leads to a downfall. Another example of that in Proverbs. But the big one for us, I think, is, is the final judgment and Jesus coming back, which I don't feel right now. Do you? Do you feel, uh, do people around me feel uh, the, the real reality of the impending judgment of Christ's second coming. There's a great verse on this in 2 Peter uh, that they say, people say, where is this coming that he promised? I don't feel it. It's been We've been waiting 2,000 years. Um, everything has continued from the beginning of creation, these people say. 
And it's understandable because this judgment or the second coming, it's asymptomatic really for us. We don't feel it. So we really need to be mindful of things that uh, are true and are coming as realities in the future, but we don't feel them right now. Now, on the other hand, you might say, but that doesn't mean we believe everything. Aren't we warned about believing false prophets, false authorities, myths, uh, empty philosophies? Uh, we could expand that, expand that to pseudoscience and things like that. That's right. We, we don't want to be credulous. Doesn't this beg the question of, of whom do you trust? Who tells the truth? What authority do you trust? And we should trust Jesus and his word. I trust Christ's authority. But on this, this earth, how about the medical authorities? Do you trust the CDC or the WHO? I think generally speaking, the answer is yes. Uh, they, they are not perfect. They can make mistakes, but they know a whole lot more about this stuff than I do. And I think uh, we do well to, to heed them. Uh, they're a whole lot more informed and smarter on these matters. I want to take this moment in the next segment to look at the coronavirus horizontally. It's a love your neighbor moment. And then the third and last segment to look at it vertically. Uh, what does this say about God? What's God up to? How do we look at this world, this moment, vertically as to what God is up to, what, what we can say about that biblically?